Hello, I'm RJ Laverne from the Davy Tree Expert Company, and today we're going to talk about exploring the world of tree rings. Now, most of us are probably familiar with looking at a stump of a tree and maybe even counting the, the rings to estimate how old the tree is. But you might not realize that not all trees have growth rings. It's only the trees that grow in temperate zones, those areas of the world that have distinct winters and summers that have individual growth rings. Trees that grow in tropical areas that have a constant growing season are always putting on new wood so they don't have distinct growth rings. But here we've got a, a piece of oak and we can look at the individual rings and have an idea of how old the tree is. And each growth ring is divided into two types of wood. There's early wood and there's late wood. And it's this pattern of early wood and late wood that makes the tree growth rings very visible to us. Now early wood, as you might suggest or might suspect, is put on in the springtime of each year. And as the tree grows, it grows very big in open wood cells. And as the summer progresses, the wood cells get smaller and denser and darker in color. So if we look at the, the growth rings on this oak tree, and I'm going to wet it a little bit with some water so that those growth rings really stand out, we can see the alternating patterns of light and dark. And the light are those open cells that are the early wood put on in spring, and the dark cells are the ones that are put on later in the year. You might also notice in this piece of oak, there are little lines that radiate out from the center of the, of the tree, and those are called rays. Those are special cells that help store energy and move energy into and out of the tree. So when you look at a piece of furniture that's made out of oak, what you're seeing is the sides of the growth rings, the alternating growth rings and the little flecks of rays. And that's what makes uh, wood used for furniture so interesting. So that's early wood and late wood. Let's talk a little bit about heartwood and sapwood. Now this is a piece of English elm that dates back to the, uh, the days of John Hancock. And you can see the interior of this piece of wood is very dark and it's surrounded by a, a light band that is just underneath the bark. Well, the dark part is the heartwood, and the light ring is called sapwood. The dark part used to be sapwood, used to be living cells, but as the tree grows, these cells die and are there primarily to support the tree. And it's just this lighter edge, this lighter ring on the outside of the tree, right underneath the bark, that transports all of the water and all of the nutrients from the roots throughout the rest of the tree. So in reality, it's just the living cells right underneath the bark that do all of the work of moving the water. And that is why it's so important not to cut into the bark because that's where all of the living cells reside. So that's heartwood and sapwood. And last but not least, let's talk a little bit about tension wood and compression wood. Here I've got a, a piece of, of black locust. I'm going to wet this and you can see that the growth rings are very distinct and we can see the, the light rings that are the early wood and the dark part of the rings that's the late wood. But you might also be able to see that the rings are not concentric but rather the pith, the interior of, the, of this branch is offset. And the reason that that is, is that this branch was growing at an angle, kind of like this. And the gravity is always pulling that branch down. The tree is always working against the forces of gravity. So it needs extra strong wood to pull that branch up and hold it against gravity. And the way the trees do that at least the trees that have leaves, broadleaf trees, is that on the top part of the branch it builds extra strong, extra large wood cells that tend to pull the branch up and hold it 
against the forces of gravity. And so just by looking at this, we can tell what part of the branch was on the upside and what part was on the lower side. Now, if this were a conifer, a tree that had needles, like a pine or a spruce, they approached the, the problem differently. And instead of building extra wood on the upper side, they build extra wood on the lower part of the branch. So the pines and the spruces attack gravity by pushing up against the bottom side of the branch, where trees that have leaves like maples and oaks, they attack the problem of gravity by pulling up on that branch and building up the extra strength on the upper part of the branch. So we have early wood and late wood in our growth rings. We have heartwood and sapwood that tells us the living part of the tree. And we have compression wood and tension wood that tells us how that tree responded to the forces of gravity. So I hope you found this discussion of looking at tree rings uh, interesting. Thanks for joining us today and join us again next time.